Hey, how's it going everyone? I'm just celebrating with a nice cold beer because I've finally finished version 2 of the solar water heater sand battery. Um, this time around in this video I've, I've detailed the whole construction of it step by step. Um, obviously as you can see here we've got internal pipes here in the sand battery portion surrounded by sand plus we've got the external pipes facing directly in the sun and this time it's um, it's all in one loop which should make a huge um, difference in the heating it should, should create this this should create a lot more heat absorb a lot more heat than the first parallel piped version um, there's no plastic in this version it's all soldered aluminium joins um, it's all cheap DIY materials if you haven't seen my other videos uh, I'll have to tell you that this this whole setup here this whole solar water heater here goes inside of an outdoor solar collector insulated in an enclosure which faces the sun um, so anyway, before we test this out, I'm going to need to make my second compost pile for the compost heating system, which runs in series with the solar heater. The reason being, if you haven't watched my other videos, is because the as the cooler water circulates through the compost and sucks the heat out, it actually cools the heat down. So to counter that effect, I have to build two compost heaps and I have to alternate the flow through each pile every second day or so to give the pile time to heat back up. So anyway, so that'll be the next project I'll do in the next month or two, uh, and I'll post a detailed video of that, and then I'll go away, I'm going away for holiday for six weeks, so after I get back from holiday, which will be about autumn time, um, I'll set the whole system up, and we'll do some heating tests, and we'll see how much heating it um, this generates, this new system, I'm sure it's going to be much, 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 I know it'll be much bigger than the first version. Um, any suggestions let me know, I still haven't installed this yet, so I've still got to do the joins on the pipes, and I've still got to put it in the collector. But I think it's pretty good for what I've, the materials I've used to make it. It's definitely a lot more robust and a lot stronger than the first one. So anyway, um, in this video, you'll uh, just a quick rundown of some of the things you'll see here. We'll be we'll be doing some aluminium to aluminium pipe joins, solder joins. I'll run through the different solders I attempted to use, what not to use. We'll look at how I've annealed and bent the aluminium, um, and we'll look at a whole lot of other things. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, Cheers. Yeah, so for the next version, uh, the way I'm going to make it is I'm going to do solder joins, which I'll show you soon, aluminium solder joins, and <clears throat> I'm going to use the same aluminium pipe, but this time I'm going to bend it. So the first thing I need to do before I can bend it nicely like this one here is I need to anneal the aluminium. So basically what that is is I've got to heat the aluminium up to a certain temperature so that the aluminium will bend nicely. The other thing I need to do, uh, which I'll run you through later, is I fill it with uh, sand first, the pipe with sand, and then I bend it. So to show you what happens if I don't anneal the aluminium, so this one's been annealed, I'll show you what happens if I don't anneal it. So this one here is currently, you've already bent it a little bit, as you can see it's oops, it's it's creased already. This, this is currently filled with sand, and if I wasn't to anneal the aluminium, this is what will happen. So basically you're not going to get a nice bend, you're just going to get it, it's basically just going to snap like that. So I'll run you through the process now um, from the start and we'll go from there. Yeah so there is a way to tell when aluminium has been heated enough to be annealed. Um, so the, the way you do that according to Google is you get a marker and you draw a mark on your aluminium and you heat that up with flame when the mark, the vivid mark, marker mark disappears you know it's the correct temperature I can't do that because my aluminium is painted black so I'm just going to guess it I've done it already on this one here and it worked alright so basically for me when the paint starts melting off and a little, a little bit after that sort of close enough that it seems to work so I'm, I'm not going to worry about doing that but you can google that up and find out if you need to So I've just got an ordinary propane butane mix. Uh, 
Okay, so what I've done now, it's cooled down now. I've taped the end of the pipe up and I'm just simply going to fill it with sand. Give it a few taps to settle the sand. I want the sand nice and uh, packed in there so that it doesn't create any gaps when I bend it. And I'll get one between my knee and basically bend it where it's been annealed. Yes, as you can see it bends nicely now. And that's a nice perfect round bend, no creases in it, no cracks in it. So the annealing really does work. Alright, so next step is I'll give the ends a bit of a clean off. I'm going to put a little mark in the inside on the aluminium that I can see. So you might be able to see that on the camera there. And then I'm going to get my blowtorch and I'm just going to heat it up until that mark vanishes. When that mark vanishes I know that the metal is the correct temperature that it's been annealed. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Give that a bit of a wipe off. So there's my two ends. Yeah, so using my homemade swaging bit that I made earlier on, um, I'm now going to swage at the end of the pipe or expand it so I can join it. Yeah, so this, this time around, just like last time, I'm going to be getting all my aluminium pipe out of a perimeter fence. Reason being, it was cheaper to buy a perimeter fence and to cut the aluminium pipe out of the perimeter fence than what it was to just buy the pipe. So, um, yeah, so let's get moving. I'll carry on and start cutting it all out. Alright, so a quick look at the four different types of solders that I've used here and I'll explain um, I'll explain the difference of each one and I'll show a quick video clip of each one so you can see how each went so the first one I tried was this stuff here um, the solder here which has a quite a low melting point of about 380 degrees um, if you look at the video clip beside it it flows quite well but when I leak tested it I found pretty much every joint had leaks in it and it didn't stick as well so when I bent the pipes it quite easily came apart so if you're wondering what it looks like zoomed in if I can focus the camera it's sort of it's sort of got sort of a rough sort of appearance on the outside it's not flux cord and it's sort of shiny on the on the underside um, yeah so that's the first one there then I had to go at these brazing rods, aluminium 4043, melting point's a lot higher, which is why I didn't want to originally use it, um, being at about 570 to 630. So I had to be careful, I sort of picked the truck up after a while on how to sort of 
heat the rod a bit and then heat the aluminium so that I don't burn a hole in the aluminium. So I kind of half heat the rod, half heat the aluminium and then I get the rod to melt into the aluminium at the same time. Took a few tries to get it right but if you have a look at the video clip here that I'm showing you'll see how it turns out. It kind of turns, it breaks quite easily but it kind of turns into kind of like a paste but it, it is quite strong so it, is, it does seal and it is quite hard to snap. Um, so the next thing I've used for the rest of it, once I got it, was the flux cord. Oh, by the way, going back to this brazing rod here, it doesn't have a flux in the centre. As you can see there, there's no flux in it. Whereas this stuff here, flux cord, has the white flux in the centre, if you can see that. I'll try and focus that. It's got that white stuff in the centre there, flux. This stuff here seemed to fill the joints quite well. It has a similar sort of melting point to the other brazing rods. But this stuff seemed to fill the joints quite well. It's like it seemed to flow in there quite well, but it was also quite tricky to use. I had to heat it at the same time as I melted it to stop melting the aluminium. And I did melt a few holes in the aluminium. I did, did have a few fails. So if you have a look at the video clip of this stuff that I post, side here that's how that's how it sort of looks it sort of flows in quite nicely and the other stuff that's just arrived is the AliExpress flux cord solder so it says 400 degrees is the melt point for that although a lot of the comments say that it's not so what I'll do and I'll show it in the video in a minute is I'm going to use a flux cord one here to do a join and I'm going to use one of the AliExpress ones and I'll see if it really does melt at 400. I have a feeling it's probably going to be like this. It just looks the same. It doesn't look as soft as the slow melt point solder here. So, but anyway, we'll find out. We'll see how that goes. I did also try to use originally plumbing solder and that, would, that just did not work at all. It just did not stick to the aluminium at all. Um, if I still have the clip of it, I'll post it on the side here so you can see but otherwise, yeah, you don't use that. All right, so I've just given the inside pipes a pressure test. So I've just put the hose on it, turned the hose on, and just looking out for leaks. And so far, everything for the inside fins is good. Uh, pipes is good. There's no leaks in it. Um, so everything seems well sealed. You can give it a good little wobble and stuff, and it doesn't leak anywhere. Um, it's surprisingly quite strong, the joins. I'm quite... I'm quite happy with the way the joins have come out. Um, yeah, so next thing is I'm going to start laying them on the corrugated steel and um, see how it goes. Yeah, so I've now finally joined all the solder joined all the inside pipes um, that go in the inside of the solar heater. So this is so the other side of this corrugated steel is what faces the sun, and these pipes will be on the inside of the corrugated steel. And around these will be sand, same as last time, and, and then it'll be sealed with another piece of corrugated steel on the other side. Um, but this time what I'm also going to do is, there'll be another pipe coming out here, and that'll run on the face of the corrugations, on the sun-facing side. So it won't be in the sand, kind of the sand battery part of it. So these will be in the sand battery part, and the other lot of pipes will be facing the sun on the outside of the corrugations. Um, so anyway, before we get to that, next thing I'm going to do is I bought these cheap low temperature welding rods off AliExpress. Um, I don't know. I'm going to give them a go and just see how they go, and I might try and um, I might try and use them to stick these pipes down to the steel. Um, if that doesn't work, I'll come up with another idea. It might just be saddles and rivets. It might be something else. But I want to have these pipes really nicely touching the steel. I want to have them against the steel. Um, for maximum heat absorption from the steel because that's what's going to get the hottest so uh, I'll come up with a way to do it and we'll try this now and we'll see how that goes and hopefully it works Alright, so I've now secured all of the internal pipes to the corrugated steel and I'm just currently doing another little pressure test as you can hear there, water's currently flowing through 
and pretty much I've just got to wait and make sure there's no leaks. So far so good. When the water comes into here. Oh, you can hear a bit of air coming out there. That'll be on the end of the hose, the rubber bit. Yep, there's the gap, there's the gap, there's the water. I'll go and turn that off. Yep, so I'm not seeing any leaks. There's currently some pressure on it. To see how much pressure's on it, I'll pop this pose off. quite a lot of pressure so so that's good so next, next thing I'm gonna do now is I've got some solder here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna melt the solder down all of the metal pipes to give them a good connection contact with the fins um, yes just so the heat transfers nicely so I'll go ahead and do that Yeah, so I've got all my pipes lined up now. Next thing is just join the join them all up basically. So the pipes that go on the top of the fins are now done. I'll just go ahead and give this a pressure test, make sure everything's good. Yeah, so I've now cut out my back piece of corrugated steel and just like the last time I'll go ahead and rivet it to the front section and when that's done that's going to leave these little spaces down here where each of the internal pipes are and later on I'll come along and I'll fill that with sand um, and these internal pipes will be surrounded by sand sand which will get hot of course, kind of like a sand battery um, so we'll go ahead and do that now 
All right, so I've clamped down both sides nicely. Um, I've laid out all my rivets. I'm about to go through and drill the holes, and then I'm going to rivet them. They're just aluminium rivets. Um, I'm just going to make sure that the, I have a rivet right at the very ends here, um, because as I found out last time, the metal expands quite a lot for heat, and I don't want the metal expanding here and letting the sand escape. Um, so yeah, just I'll make sure I have a couple of rivets right at the end and then I'll just have a few through the center So I'll go ahead and do that now One more thing I'm going to put a rivet in on each corner first before I go and drill them all out So that when I'm drilling it out it might it doesn't move and make the holes not line up So I'll make sure I do that first Yeah, so I've just completed my last solder join. I'll show you here. So now that that's done, the external pipes are joined to the internal pipes. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to secure all of the external pipes as tight as I can to the middle fins here using saddles and after I've done that I'm going to get a bit of solder and I'm going to run solder down all the gaps so there's contact between the channels and the pipes but before I do this we better give it one last pressure test before I go and secure it all make sure there's no leaks Yeah, next thing I'm going to do here is I've got some lead solder, lead tin solder, and I'm just going to, using tin snips, I'm just going to chop it into smaller bits to make it easier to melt. So I'll go ahead and do that. Alright, so we're just about to foam the bottom side, the base side, but before we do that I'm just going to have to put a bit of liquid nails glue around the edges and in the small gaps between the channels where the foam might not fill. Yeah, so I'm ready to fill all my channels now, my holes with expander foam, expanding foam. Um, this expanding foam, this particular expanding foam here it says on the front can be applied at any angle. So on my last video someone made the comment you need to hold it upside down. Well actually you don't need to hold this stuff upside down according to the instructions. So I just thought I'd point that out. So I'll go through and I'll um, fill all my holes with expander foam. And what I'll also do is I'll also put this tube, steel tube here which is designed to have a temperature probe slit inside of it um, which I'll be monitoring the temperature of this just like the other one using a wireless temperature probe um, and it just records everything basically so I can I can look at trends and all that sort of stuff so I'll be sliding this in a similar position to what each one of the internal pipes is because I want to get an idea for the temperature that these pipes the temperature around these pipes so if I slide this tube in so that it's touching the outside sun facing metal and the back of it surrounded in sand it gives me a good idea for what temperature these internal water pipes would have been under or are under 
So I'll go through now and I'll fill these with expander foam and I'll slide this in. Yeah, so expander foam's all in now. And while the expander foam's curing, it's probably a good time to go and do three things. Hit three birds with one stone. I'll go to the beach and I'll get some sand. I'll take my daughter for a walk at the same time and a bit of a play. And I'll take the dog for a walk. So we'll go and do that. Yeah, so my foam has now cured at the base of the channels. Um, so I'll go along now and I'll fill all of these channels with sand. Um, before I do that, I'll flash on the screen here. I managed to find a research document which details all the minerals found in this sand from the exact spot I took it from, Christchurch, New Zealand. So I'll flash that on the screen now. And if anyone wanted to see that, you can pause it and have a look at it. Um, it looks like it's quite high in quartz, which actually has apparently is the best most conduct thermal conduct of soil of all soil types so that's one good thing i suppose and it's also really quite fine sand here so there's not much of an air gap between all the particles so that's also going to help a bit so anyway i'll go through now and i'll fill all this up So I've filled that to the top and I'm, this time I'm going to go through and give it a real good tap, better than last time, um, to make sure that all the particles are packed real tight so that there's minimal air gaps in there. Sand of course is a bit of an insulator itself but um, this is quite fine sand so I suppose that does help. So I'll compact it as much as I can so that all the sand particles are touching quite closely. That's now done, so I will chop the top off the foam that I used the other day and I'll attempt to reuse the foam and fill the holes. Time to give it a paint. 